Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm putting together just a small container arrangement to put in our new garden along the west side of our house. I actually just posted a picture of it um, and it shows our Arborvita hedge with the urns and the boxwood hedge. And then we planted Supertina Vista Snowdrift, which is a brand new Supertina Vista coming out next year. And it looks so pretty to me. It kind of inspired me to create an all white bloom arrangement to put over there. We haven't really started filling up the empty spaces with plants yet. And I'm kind of struggling right now. Maybe you guys can help me. I kind of want to keep it very controlled and only use a couple different colors of flowers over there. Um, and then my other inclination is, is to go kind of wild and cottagey looking since I have so much formality. So I'm not really sure which direction I'm going to take it, but I think that this arrangement is going to look really pretty over there. So first off, I want to show you the container. This is just a ceramic glazed container and kind of a dark gold color. I picked this up last fall for a fall arrangement and it looks really pretty with fall tones, fall colors in it. And then I'll talk about each one of these plants as I'm putting them in the container. Just sitting here in a bunch, they look really pretty together. Um, but I do need to fill up my container first with soil. So I've got my bag of Espoma potting mix right here. And hopefully we only need one bag because I only want, brought one bag up here. Yeah, I think that'll be perfect. And then I'm gonna add in my slow release fertilizer which I do with everything. And I was actually just thinking, because this stuff lasts for like six to eight weeks, I was just thinking I should probably go top dress. Oops, there comes the little measuring scoop. I should probably go top dress some of my other containers and give them a little recharge. The good thing about this is that it's a slow feed. It's heat activated, which it's hot right now. We're gonna get, I think we're gonna break 100 degrees this next week. Um, so it'll really start working and slowly feeding your plants, but I do still do a water soluble fertilizer every week as well And that's how we get such amazing performance out of all of our annuals Okay, so that's ready to go. So I'm going to start with my centerpiece I am going to back this up I think to our garden fence or on the back of a back of the flower bed So I'm going to put my centerpiece kind of toward the back here. This one is called Graceful Grasses Skyrocket Penicetum. You might be familiar with like the purple fountain grass, the, what's it called? Yeah, I think it's just called Graceful Grasses Purple Fountain Grass. Anyway, it's a um, annual grass that's more purple colored in the same family as this one. Beautiful, but I love this one, which is really hard to get out of its container right now because the roots are just going nuts. Um, this one's awesome because it's got a green center, but then the outside of each leaf um, or each blade has white striping. So you can use it in an all white arrangement really nicely. And also this grass, since it's further on in the season, um, is root bound. And I don't often break up root systems unless they look like this right here. I'm gonna do a little work on this. Everything I'm using in today's container can take full sun, which it needs to, to live on the west side. Um, it gets a lot of sun over there. Okay. I'm gonna back that up right there. This one will typically grow like in a large container with lots of food. It can grow upwards of 30, 36 inches, I think. Two feet to two and a half feet. Um, doesn't grow, grow quite as big as the purple fountain grass, but I think it'll be perfect in this container. Okay, and then on this side, I'm planting this. this is I think one of the ones I'm most excited to show you. This is a new one coming out next year. It's a diamond snow euphorbia. So you might be familiar with the diamond frost, which grows um, a little bit more sparse than this, and it's a little taller. This one grows about a foot, foot and a half tall, but you can see it has a little bit more of a spilling type effect, and it's much more dense with color. Um, the diamond frost is a little bit more like it intermingles with plants really, really well. I think this is just so beautiful. Look at that. And look at that with the color of the container right there. So pretty. I want to make sure that I get soil around all the root balls. And this is the benefit of not doing a really sped up video. You can see that I actually do pack in soil around the root balls. When we do fast videos, you sometimes can't see that step. Okay, and then right in the middle, right in front of the grass, I'm actually gonna pop in a geranium. This is a Patriot white geranium. I started from seed um, in my house, actually in our bedroom under a grow light this winter, and they're doing so wonderfully. Look at that, isn't that so pretty? So I thought that that would be some nice bold uh, foliage, or not foliage, blooms, and foliage, I suppose. Really pretty. In front of that, I'm going to use a Supertunia white. Um, now the benefit of just doing a Supertunia white instead of like next year when you can get your Supertunia Vista snowdrift, 
the Vista series of Super Tunias get absolutely enormous. Um, like you could use just one in this container and it would fill it up so fast. Um, and the Super Tunias, this one does grow vig like quite vigorously, but not as much as a Vista. So I'm gonna just tuck that one in the front there and I'm kind of tipping the root ball. I don't know if you can see that right there because I want it to spill out the front. So I'm gonna make sure to get soil packed in around it and on top of it. And that's just one of the things these do really well that way. I mean, you want to make sure the roots are covered with soil, but tipping it just helps it um, look pretty right from the beginning. Okay, now I'm gonna put in an Angel Face Cascade White Angelonia. And these have been really fun. Um, and I'm not sure if these are new this year or if they were new last year. I'm not positive, um, but you might be more familiar with the Angelonia that grows more upright as more of kind of a thriller in your container. These will grow about six to maybe 12 inches tall, and then they do a spiller kind of thing over the side. And that's what I wanna put in right here, kind of to the side of the arrangement. Most of these have just really nice looking root systems. They're not really bound at all. I mean, you can do a little tease, but it's not necessary at all with these. Everything's looking really healthy, which is encouraging in July. Ah, I think that's pretty. And this one, we've experienced it with a couple of our um, Angelonias we've used in other containers. They tend to like to grow and kind of intermingle with the other plants. Okay, so I do have one little space left right back in this back corner, and I'm gonna use a Burgarten sage. Um, now these, this is a culinary sage. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of sage in the kitchen, but I love to use it out in the landscape both in containers for its icy blue color. And I feel like I can get away with it as a foliage accent because it has that silver hue, which goes really well with all white blooms. Um, these make an excellent hedge out in the garden. If you can plant these as just, and I've thought, I've been thinking of an area I can do that in in my own garden. My mom has um, a hedge of the Burgarten planted and it's gorgeous. Root system is pretty bound up. I mean, look at that, that's pretty thick. So I'm gonna break up just the bottom here just to help it along just a little bit. Find the good side here, right there. And then we'll tuck that in. And the good thing about this, it's perfect, is that it only grows about one to two feet tall and wide. And in this situation, it'll probably only grow about um, a foot because we're restricting the room where it has to grow. Okay, so I do need a little bit of extra soil. I'm gonna pack that in around the root ball, just toward the back, everything else is packed in pretty well. Whoops, just dropped all my cans on the ground. Um, but usually when I get to the very last plant, I may have a little bit of extra space to fill in. Okay, so that's perfect. How does it look from the front? Let me come around and take a look. Oh, it looks really pretty. Now I could stand to have a little bit more height here. Let me see if I can arrange some of the branches. This will all evolve as it starts to grow. Um, but I think that this is gonna do really well. And I totally forgot to run my drip tubing up through the bottom of the container. <laughs> Dang it. So um, because this will be backed up in the west side, I will run a quarter inch drip tubing up the back of the container and you hopefully won't be able to see it. And in a container this size, I'll probably use two half gallon per hour emitters and just pop it into our drip system um, that we already have existing over there. And that's how it will be watered. But like I said, all of these plants do well in full, full sun. It's a really good um, arrangement of flowers to use for a moon garden or something um, for that sort of effect. It has kind of a glowing quality at night, any of these white flowers. And none of these tend to want to close at night. You know, there's some flowers that close up or go away, um, you know, after just one day or they need the light to open. All of these will remain and look really, really pretty even throughout the evening hours. Um, and I also like this palette because it's very kind of classic. It's classic, it's peaceful to me, and I don't know, it just never gets old. So anyway, thought you guys might enjoy seeing this arrangement. I'm gonna go find a spot where I like it over there, and I think it'll be fun to watch it fill in. And we'll give you updates later on in the season, probably in the garden tour video. So anyway, thanks so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.